The government of Karnataka is hosting the 26th edition of Bangalore Tech Summit later next month. Today we have Karnataka's IT minister Priyank Kharge with us who will talk more about what the government is planning at the event. So if you would tell us more about the 26th Tech Summit that is being hosted next month. Uh, well the Bangalore Tech Summit is one of the world's biggest technology summits that is, uh, that is hosted by uh, any government. And uh, for the first time, we'll be having our uh, Global Innovation Alliance partners coming in, which is, which has more than, uh, which has a participation of more than uh, 40 countries. And uh, more importantly, uh, the Bangalore Tech Summit is a big showcase of uh, the capacity and the capabilities of. Uh, the Indian uh, uh, technologies, the innovations and the inventions. So uh, this is one uh, space, one summit that uh, uh, people should not miss because uh, this is where uh, India innovates, not just for itself, but also for the world. So uh, innovation for India and impact for the world happens at this summit and uh, that's the reason why it's so important. So, sir, can you talk about some of the big innovations that we can see at the summit? No, well, there are going to be a lot of product launches, a lot of services launches, where um, <coughs> it's being led by the industry uh, captains themselves. So, we have uh, uh, tracks which are ranging from uh, biotechnology, life sciences, genomics to uh, deep tech, quantum uh, computing, artificial intelligence, uh, drones. We have even uh, something like a gaming accelerator put up in there. We have a special uh, uh, impetus on uh, space tech. So the uh, the summit or the conclave is extremely wide. Like I said, it's the biggest. So we are technology and sector agnostic. So probably you will find every technology uh, that is available for tomorrow in Bangalore during the Bangalore Tech Summit. So over the past many years, Bangalore has been Bangalore has been the IT hub for the country. Uh, I would want to understand that there has been the change of power in Karnataka in the last six months. As in six months ago, there was a change of power. So how has the state's IT and technology uh, hub evolved in the last six months? What new policies are you adopting? Well, see, uh, uh, this government has a uh, uh, is keeping it very simple. Okay. We are focusing on five to six important things. Firstly, we are focusing on skill sets because we are of the firm belief that uh, we are no longer catering to the Indian ecosystem. We are catering to the uh, global ecosystem. And uh, Bangalore is the place where it happens. Karnataka is a place that happens. Number two, we are uh, forming a lot of centers of excellence, uh, centers of excellence uh, in emerging technologies. So uh, we will be incubating uh, talent, we'll be nurturing talent and innovations and inventions for emerging technologies. Uh, the third important thing that we are doing is we are trying to uh, b uh, create clusters beyond Bengaluru. Okay. So whether it's an aerospace uh, cluster in uh, Belgavi or a semiconductor cluster in uh, Mysuru. So we have got a very specific, uh, cluster specific approach uh, this time around. And uh, ease of doing business is something we are heavily focusing on. So uh, it's not going to be a single window system that leads to many doors. So we are ensuring that we provide the most conducive environment for investment uh, across the globe in the uh, state. So we are keeping it very, very simple. Four or five important things that the industry uh, is looking at to ensure that we build for the world. So before I go back to semiconductors and AI, I want to understand what exactly is happening in the startup ecosystem in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. or well, uh, we have a very dynamic uh, uh, ecosystem in uh, uh, in the startup uh, arena, and uh, we are trying to keep pace with that. So one of the things that we do to ensure that we have the leadership uh, positioning is that we conduct regular open houses to understand uh, what is it that is plaguing that sector that we can solve? So we had uh, recently we had a fintech uh, open house wherein uh, they requested us to liaison with the central government. Uh, then we had a open house with certain SMEs and MSMEs in uh, electronics who are requesting for uh, uh, a center of excellence in design. So we are talking to the startups. We are learning from them. We are uh, uh, adopting uh, what they are uh, suggesting to us. We are bringing it them as uh, schemes. We are bringing them as uh, uh, policy interventions. So uh, we are uh, we are 
trying to be as agile as the startups themselves. So yes, it's a work in progress, but uh, I'd like to uh, reinstate the fact that uh, Karnataka is the only government that can actually uh, learn and adopt as quickly as the startups. That's interesting, sir. So what about the manufacturing and electronics ecosystem? There was news recently that Karnataka is losing out to the neighboring states when it comes to semiconductors as well. So your thoughts on that? What is... No, what look is look at the numbers. So, of course, there, there'll be... We, we can't win them all, right. okay? But ever since our government has come to power, we have not lost out a single promised investment. Okay. And no industry or no corporate puts all their eggs in one basket, Right. So, uh, of course, people are saying, no, Telangana is catching up, Chennai is catching up. Look at the numbers. We cater to more than 10% of the electronics manufacturing in the uh, country, $4.52 billion worth of electronics uh, uh, manufacturing goods are export, uh, exported out of uh, Karnataka. We are the leaders in biotechnology. We are leaders in IT services. The gap is huge. We have more than 25,000 uh, startups that are uh, uh, registered in uh, uh, Karnataka. We have 43 unicorns. Show me another ecosystem which has that. Show me one investment that we have lo lost out. Automobile sectors we are leading. We are leading in aerospace. We are leading in manufacturing. We are leading in uh, ESDM. Right. We have uh, the semiconductor. Where is Apple uh, uh, iPhones being manufactured? Where are other phones being manufactured? It's all coming here. The displays, the LCDs, the fabrications, everything is, the entire supply chain is coming to uh, Karnataka. Of course, there will be competition and we are uh, bracing up for it. Right. But they're very, very far, they're a uh, far cry from where we are. Right. <coughs> so, especially in terms of semiconductors, what uh, new is happening? Are you in discussion with any companies? See, getting in the top names is one thing. But getting their entire supply chain is another. So uh, we are talking to everybody in the ecosystem, not only the big players, but also their entire supply chain uh, that add value to the uh, big company. So we recently had, uh, um, uh, we did a roadshow in uh, America, wherein uh, we have uh, gone and spoken to the top players. We have assured them that not only doing ease of business, we have assured them ready, uh, ready to deploy uh, human resources as well. Okay. So skill sets, incubation, centers of excellence in manufacturing, their entire supply chain that they require. We're talking to them, however big or small uh, players they might be in that uh, uh, chain. We're talking to the big players themselves also, asking them what is it that they require to ensure that uh, the government of Karnataka is policy ready, right. scheme ready, incentive ready, skill ready. So this kind of... Uh, uh, agility, uh, agility in policy is something that nobody has. Right. So especially on the skill set, I'm working on an article around semiconductors itself <coughs> that where is India missing right now. And a lot of experts have told me that skill is a biggest, bigger challenge right now. Even Micron is struggling to find talent in India. So what exactly is your government doing on upskilling, reskilling, and especially in the semiconductor space? So like I said, uh, for whatever reason, the world is looking at India. And in India, they're very clearly looking at government of Karnataka to do okay. this. So uh, when I was recently in U.S., a company told me that the uh, U.S. requires close to around 1 million chip designers. Okay. They need to upskill, and we are the only p people who can do that. We can deliver on that. So we have uh, provided a, a, a skill council, which is headed by me and the Minister of uh, Skill Development. And we are talking to the industry di directly. So you said, spoke about Micron. If Micron needs 1,000 engineers, we are ready to train them for it. Okay. You give us the curriculum. You give us the syllabus. We okay. will train. We will do, help you out. We have something called the government uh, training and tool uh, rooms. Okay. Uh, where, uh, where we can ensure that the private uh, sector adopts that along with us and uh, trains them on, this, on their skill sets. The idea is very clear for the government of Karnataka. We are here to provide, uh, give the entire world the most employable workforce. Okay. So we'll do anything it takes to ensure our graduates, our uh, people are the most trained, most skilled people, whether it's white collar or blue collar. That's interesting, sir. So, I also want to understand, apart from semiconductors, uh, the new buzzwords are <coughs> quantum... Computing. Generative AI, all those things. So what is your thought process, the government's thought process on newish technology? So uh, that's uh, emerging technology is what the government of Karnataka is known for. Uh, and of course, we have this um, huge uh, talent pool 
that is always uh, thinking of new things. Like I said earlier, we are listening to them. Right. We are talking to them. If the, uh, a couple of uh, companies have already come up to us and said that they'd like to partner with us for uh, quantum computing. A couple of them have come up to us and, sp uh, and are speaking to us on uh, whether we can collaborate on AI and machine learning for government uh, uh, services that we uh, uh, deploy. So uh, we are open to partner. We are open to uh, uh, anything collaborative that is uh, suggested with the uh, startups. So uh, we the any state that is going to be future ready is going to be only Karnataka. Okay. Um, so today, this morning, Biden administration in U.S., they have passed an executive order on AI, artificial intelligence. Obviously, the government of India is looking into it as well. So anything, any, any uh, your opinions on that? Is, is your state looking at something to regulate uh, AI? Uh, well, uh, we are watching closely what's happening in U.S. and also in the European Union. Right. There, uh, there are some court battles going on and also the uh, certain governments are working towards regulating AI. In fact, recently, even in the governor's address... Um, uh, the Honorable uh, Chief Minister of Karnataka did mention about uh, the possible threats of uh, AI and a need to uh, regulate it. But how much and uh, uh, how long would it take is something that we need to work around. You just can't uh, uh, you know, bring up uh, uh, a policy that is uh, regressive and ensure we kill the entire industry. Right. So we need to figure out what are the pros and cons what is it that works in uh, US and Europe might not actually work here or what works here might not work there. So we will uh, have a, a consultative <laughs> approach on this. We will uh, speak to all the stakeholders. We'll st speak to the uh, the best in the industry to ensure what is it that we can do. Right. Uh, so another area I want to focus on, we just briefly talked about sustainability. And for all the newish technologies, data centers are the basic, I think, I, I, I should say backbone. So is the government really looking at green data centers or curtailing the carbon footprint of data centers? Uh, we have a data center policy okay. uh, on one side and the the flip side of, like you said, uh, we need more green uh, data centers as well, uh, as well. So we are coming up with sustainable, sustainable uh, green data centers uh, for that. We're coming up with a circular economy policy also, to, trying to leverage uh, technology for uh, <coughs> Uh, sustainability. We have uh, coming up with a uh, urban solutions summit, which okay. uh, the government is uh, very keen on, uh, throwing up a challenge to the uh, startups and innovators to solve the problems, uh, urban problems for the uh, government. So that includes your uh, sustainable programs for data centers as well. So we, it's um, it's a work in progress. Right. Thank you so much, sir. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.